So yesterday we got our timber jig assembled and today we're going to work on the guide rail that we run the timber jig along. And you see I've got some lumber behind me. They recommend using 1x5x8s to make the guide rail. And the timber jig comes with these really nice brackets here. Uh, this is some pretty thick metal. There you go. Is that? This is some pretty thick metal, uh, so that's not going to bend. And what we need to do is, actually before I talk about that, when you're buying the lumber for the timber jig, the directions say you need to make the lumber that you run the chainsaw on about 16 inches longer than the board you're going to cut. So by having 8 foot lumber, I'm going to be able to cut 6 foot, a little bit longer than 6 foot pieces of, of lumber. And the reason for that is you need to have a place where you can actually mount the saw before you start cutting the log. So for what I'm trying to do, I'd like to make some 4 foot long boards to put up in the rafters here to hold some stuff in my garage. And I'd also like to someday uh, maybe build some, uh, find some cedar trees and make some cedar one by lumber uh, to make some fencing. So that's perfectly fine for what I'm looking to do. One thing I didn't quite understand, and the directions have this one line, and it says, it is all right if the boards you use for the guide rail are somewhat crooked, but they may not be warped. And I know there's you know, crook and bow and all kinds of funky lumber stuff, but I'm not really sure what exactly warped lumber means. So I just went out and got the straightest pieces I could find, which um, I'm pretty sure that there's no such thing as a perfectly straight piece of lumber. So we did our best, and I'm going to save the two best boards I have for making that rail and try to think about it beforehand, how I put them together, so I work with whatever bends or crookedness are in the board. Uh, and the funny part is, is, is the wood I got was actually from Sweden. Um, I, I didn't realize that the United States, you know, it's pine, but I didn't realize we didn't have enough pine in this country. So this is actually imported from Sweden. So my Lagasol timber jig is from Sweden and my trees are from Sweden as well. So maybe that's why there's, I, that's just kind of weird. But anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these boards and we're going to cut it into some L-shaped pieces, which are what we use to mount to the ends of the log. And then we need to make the rail, which is basically going to be a T. And one end of that T has to have a two-inch height to it. And then we can just run those wheels from the timber jig along that T. So what we're going to do now is, is I'm just going to go ahead and, and cut some of these boards into uh, some pieces. And then we'll come back and kind of show you what, what's going on. I can't say carpentry is one of my stronger suits, so um, please work with me, and if you see any tips, put them below the video. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and start putting these pieces together. And this is the part that you screw to the log. So if my log were here, we're going to screw this to the log. And then this piece here is what we're going to secure the, um, the rail to. And what they recommend you do is to leave some space. Don't go all the way down on this board but leave some space there 
And I guess that's a testament to how strong these brackets are. So we'll see if we can, uh, I'm going to just put one there just to get it to the edge of the board. And then we'll put some screws in it and see if we can mount the next one. start with a different hole first. <laughs> a little better. So now we're going to take this piece and attach it to this piece, but we're not going to put it like this. We're supposed to put it like this. So I'm just going to put this board here to hold that up. Okay, so that's what this piece is going to look like. Apparently the trick with these screws is to kind of shove them into the wood first before you start turning them. So they kind of get started. I've been having a little bit of trouble with these guys coming out and I'm sure it's not the screw, it's got to be me. But if you give them a little oomph before you put them in, they go down much better. Okay, so there's our second bracket. So what we're going to end up doing is you, you would have your log here, you screw this to the end of the log, and then you can clamp the rail to this here. I'm pretty sure I got a little carried away with the screws. I've only got two, two, four, six, I've only got eight screws left. And I've still got four brackets left for the, um, the rail. So I'm going to go check my screw supply and if not I'm going to run to the hardware store and see if I can pick up some more of these guys. These screws would work but these are stainless and I just don't want to burn money on uh, stainless. So let's see what else I got. Inch and a quarter, three inches, two and a half. Two and a half. Two. Two. Two, one and five eighths. One inch coarse thread drywall screw. One inch fine thread drywall, drywall screw. Bet you that'd work. Especially with the number of screws I've been putting in this guy. 
All right, so coarse thread, coarse thread drywall it is. Although I do like the way the ones that came with it are a pan head and, and these drywall ones have that tapered head. So maybe I'll just I'll just go to the lumber yard and pick up some of those screws. So we're back from the hardware store and I did a test fit of how things are going to go together. And this is the part that makes me the most nervous, and I guess what we're going to do is just kind of go with it and see what happens. Worst case, I'm going to be out um, a little bit of money on these, uh, these pine boards. Everything's looking good, and, you know, when I put this speed square on, things are coming out pretty good for being, you know, perpendicular. But when I get down near this end, and I think this might have something to do with when I was talking about being... Uh, crooked or warped, you see how there's a gap? I don't know if you can see that. It's a little bit of a gap on my speed square. So when I was at the hardware store, right in there, when I was at the hardware store, I got some stuff that's going to hopefully help me to pull this board back a bit and kind of lock it in place. But again, you know, we're not looking for perfection here, but if we strive for perfection, then we'll come closer, I guess. But uh, we're going to glue this down first, and then I'm, I've got the screws. So then they give, there's four black brackets left to use over here to screw this board in. And then I've got uh, some wood blocks, and I bought some more brackets at the hardware store to see if we can straighten this out. So why don't we just go ahead and uh, we'll give it a shot. Well, folks, that's going to just about do it for today. We'll see how much of the stuff I did before I edit out. But what I ended up doing was using the metal brackets they gave me. I spaced them out evenly along the board. And then wherever the board was leaning one way or the other, actually for me, just that end was leaning a little too far back. So what I ended up doing was I bought a piece of one and a half by one and a half inch pine. I cut these little blocks. And I put these blocks behind, screwed them to the rail, and then put some wedges to kind of force the rail a little forward, and then came from the back and put some screws to hold that tight. So this is really about as good as it gets as far as I'm concerned. With, uh, you know, with one by five, it's very close to being perfectly 90 degrees. And I think the only thing I could do different would be to buy the big mill. And if I enjoy the way this works, you know, maybe someday I will. But for now, we're good to go. So what's going to happen 
is we're going to, let me get the other piece. So we'll screw these to the end of the log, and then somewhere along this, we will just clamp this piece, and we'll have to make sure this is a little bit low so we don't cut it with our chainsaw. We'll clamp this piece to this rail, and, that's, and then we can just ride the chainsaw along this, this rail to cut the log. So it's pretty straightforward. So, um, you know, a trip to the, the big box hardware store, a couple hours yesterday building, I'm going to say maybe two, maybe three hours today because I needed some parts. And uh, carpentry just really isn't my strong suit. But um, tomorrow we should be able to go ahead and start cutting with our uh, Logosol timber jig. Now one thing I am thinking about doing is I have, um, you know, I have a welder and I saw a video about how to build something called log dogs, which are basically T's in metal that you can keep, you know, make to keep your logs from rolling. And uh, I'm kind of curious, I might do some research on that a little bit more, and I'll either build those tomorrow and then try the mill out the day after, uh, or not. As anxious as I am to try out the mill, I want to make it as, as safe as possible and as enjoyable as possible. And I think those log dogs, to be able to keep the logs from rolling around, might make it both safe and enjoyable. So that is the end of part two. Thank you very much for watching, folks. And uh, please come back and we'll either show you, um, actually the next video, no matter what, is going to be me using the big mill timber jig. And we'll, we'll see how she does. Have a great day, folks.